Hi everyone and happy Wine Wednesday. If you're new, I'm Allie from A Glass After Work. Thanks for joining. Today I'm going to share with you the last shipment from the Wine Blogger Scholarship Fund Wine Club. Um, the wine club was being run through worldsbestwineclubs.com. They ran a number of fundraisers for a variety of different organizations, but all of the wines were being sourced from small wineries um, in the Paso Robles area of California. Unfortunately, just because of the difficulty in terms of shipping to um, various different states because of the different regulations and how that works um, and the cost of all of it, they've just decided that the climate for this type of wine club isn't, uh, isn't right. And so unfortunately, this is going to be it. I'm very sad about that. Um, this is a wine club that I gave as um, presents to both my parents and to my brother and sister-in-law, and it's one that I really enjoy. It was a great um, value. It was three three bottles of wine for $99 um, a shipment, and so I'm sad to, to see it go, but I do also understand why, why that's the case. So first, I'm going to share with you this um, 2010 Aaron Hill um, um, Primitivo. And um, if you're not familiar with Primitivo, Primitivo is an Italian grape that has um, its roots really actually in Croatia. And it has a similar DNA to Zinfandel. So if you like a Zinfandel, um, it, is gonna, it is gonna be similar. Um, and so it's part of why it grows really well in the Paso Robles area, but um, it isn't exactly a Zinfandel, so it's not entirely the same. Um, I happen to be a big Primitivo fan, so I'm excited about trying this one. And um, I think I mentioned the winery is a, is a small family-owned winery. And because this is probably going to be a fairly big wine, I am going to use my soiree, which if you missed that video, I did that a few weeks ago. I'll link it down below. Let's, uh... All right. So let's get a look right here. Um, definitely big dark color. Um, not surprising. It's more of a ruby color because it's a 2010. It's had a, a little bit of time to age, so which is good. Oh yeah, that is a nice nose. So. There's definitely like blackberries and um, raspberries. It's a nice mix um, actually of, of the kind of red and black fruits. Um, some blueberries, but what's nice is that we're starting to get some of those other more savory characteristics. Um, getting a, just a hint of like a leathery smell and some, uh, some pepper in there and some chocolate. So why don't we give it a taste? Cheers. Ooh, um, that's got a lot of acid. Um, definitely makes it more of a food wine, uh, which is not really surprising, but um, so much more of the savory char characteristics um, in the mouth right now. Um, lots of that kind of leathery, earthy, uh, those notes. I'm getting some blueberry um, as well, but it's much more kind of the, the, those, as I said, those earthy notes, um, some, some chocolate dust. Tannins are kind of in the medium uh, range. It's not acid, though. It's super high. So I think something that would go well with a burger or with um, some lamb or red meat. And um, it's, a, it's a little on the, the pricey side. It's a $40 bottle of wine. So um, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I think I would probably prefer a little bit less acid, but, but it's, 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 it's good. Um, Forty dollars is a little expensive for an everyday wine, but it is a small winery, and um, for 
pulling something out a, a little more special, I, I think it, I think it would work. Um, the other two wines that were in the wine club are both from Fenton Cellars, and Fenton Cellars is also a family-owned winery. Um, this is the Zinfandel, and um, this wine, I, I suspect, similar to the Primitivo, it's going to be a good barbecue wine if you like um you know, doing a like a barbecue pork or something like that. That a pork sandwich that would also probably go really well. Um, this wine is uh, twenty eight dollars. So the other wine, the other wine that came from Fenton Cellars is this um, Gewurztraminer. It's um it's a twenty twelve, and this is actually while it um, had a little bit of time to age, I think it's probably and it sounds um, from the from the notes I was reading about it, it sounds like this is definitely one of those wines that it's ready to open now. Um, I love uh, Gewurztraminer and sushi, so while we don't normally eat sushi at home, um, it is it is definitely a wine that would go well with sushi. Be sure to let me know in the uh, comments below whether or not you ever bring a wine to restaurants yourself, and whether you're, in, you know, you you're okay with paying corkage fees. I'd love to know, especially since um, the, something like the Gewurztraminer would would be a wine that I would bring to a sushi restaurant with me. And um, if you aren't already a subscriber, be sure to hit the little caricature right here or the button down below. But Definitely also click on that bell. It'll let you know when I upload a new video, which is going to be every Wine Wednesday. And if you are looking for a recommendation, there is going to be one for you right here. So with that, thanks for joining me. Cheers.